Good morning, you all. Be all you welcome to this fourth day of conferences of Conagua 2020. To begin our program today, we will have the participation of the Master Carlos Gonzaga, Expo Marca Adequada, proper Expo Marca. He is a Master in Science of Molecular Biology and Genetic Engineer, Program of Biotechnology by the University of Guayaquil. Aquaculture and Engineering by the Technical University of Machala, Master in Science and Biotechnology with men mention in Biotechnology and in Genetic Engineer Program of Biotechnology on Guayaquil. Nowadays, he is the Technical Manager of a field for the Expo Marca brand, who has an extent of 200 hectares located in Barbonos. Topic Pre Bruce Culture, Technical and Economical Aspects. Good day. Before beginning this presentation, I want to thank all the Conagua members who gently invited me to be with you and share experiences on about the stream. My topic will be the culture with pre roots economical aspects. I would like to start my presentation with a slide on which are the prices nowadays on the stream? Well, on November 27, those are the prices that nowadays are uh, in different packings. The name of which one I save it to avoid uh, mention specific brands or names. As you can see, basically the prices are very low, and the producer world has to start to seek or find a way to survive with those prices, and uh, from some time ago we are with the pre-broods as a way to shorten the cycle of the culture and do more cycles per year. When you are going to do the work with a pre brood you have to work beginning on the final result and from there go backwards to know um, how many animals are you going to put in the pre brooding Basically, one of the most repeated questions is how much are you going to produce per hectare? That question has to be answered the, as per the production of every farm, as per the capacity of the pool, pounds per hectare, how many pounds per hectare are produced on my farm. If I want to put it with more aeration, with more water exchange, other important point is uh, the equilibrium, ec economic equilibrium point. This is how many pounds do I need to produce so my cycle do not make me lose under the current prices. At least allow me to sustain on the business without losing money. Then we have to ask ourselves what way do I have to put into the and the, the pond, what size of animal I want to put into the pond, and this basically is going to be given by the distance between the pre brood and the ponds, what is going to be transferred. Well, at more distance, the size of the pre brood should be smaller. And that's why it's ideal to have a, pre a central pre brood in the distribute for two, three pools close by and the same two, three pounds on the other side. But if my, my pre brooding are in an area and the, the growth, uh, the ponds are distant, I have to, to transport on, on different tanks or the size that I have to reach won't be more 0 0.25, 0 0.30. So it's not a conflict, a problem and the prices increases due to transportation at the time to start to do the seeding. 
the capacity of charge on the pre-grading wall, this is going to be given by the aeration that we put on them, the amount or exchange that we have to do, and moreover by the condition of the soil, where is the pre-brooding. If the pre -brood has a lot of um, organic material, I have to uh, eliminate it, to reduce it, so they don't start with a strong uh, charge on that. Other thing that I have to ask myself is how many, for how many hectares are going to be sitting? I have a pre brood of, a pre brooding area of three hectares. I'm going to put three millions and I'm going to seed 100,000. Well, I will just have enough for 20 hectares on one side and 20 on the other to be able to intercalate and optimize the pre brood itself. Let's back to the e economic equilibrium point. This is an example on which we take as uh, a starting point a density of 90,000 animals transfer into the growing pound with a cost of eight dollars per thousand and in the cost of ten dollars per hectare. 96 days there of growing, survival of 65 percent, growth of 0.22. This growth is a low growth since it's a projection, I try to put the minimum possible, the possible. So we will have to 22 grams in 96 days. That will give me a cost per hectare of transfer of $3,679. If we observe with the previous chart, the pounds that I will produce will be 2850 that will give me a profit of $453. My equilibrium point will be on around 52%. With the 52%, I will include that and my profit will be zero. If I put a $1,000 that I need to profit, I will need to produce 300, 540 pounds and my survival around 75. In, in the previous example. So, if we go with the same protocol, but in this case I increase the growth to 0.25 from 0.22 to 0.25, all the rest is the same, just I increment a bit the growth, my size, my final size on the same days is going to be 25 grams. My cost per hectare is going to be 3,600 and, and I produce 3,200 pounds and my profit will be in $700. My equilibrium point won't change, almost nothing, because the rank of prices will be about the same. The same, my maximum pounds to be applied will be of my history as uh, of that thing produced we need 4,500 pounds per hectare that, that's the that what I can produce at a time to do this I need to have 75% of survival my, my point of reference it will be 65%, so I will be within the minimum and inside the maximum. If I can produce a better survival, well, I may remain with the pounds that they are projected to be produced and the ones that I will give me a profit. The cost of the larvae per thousand, as you saw in the previous example, was uh, $8 per thousand. That uh, was uh, programmed in the following way. The amount that were received, those are real data. The survival was 50% on this pre brood and my cost per million was $8. So, I will start with 90000 with a cost per hectare of $718. It's an amount, it's a big amount to start. 
And one of the things that we observed was that we needed to increase the survival. With the experience of a long time that we've been working with uh, pre-roots and with uh, the larvae, uh, the culture of the larvae, we decided to put into practice and uh, following the same uh, program, is not as example, if we raise it to 70%, what will be our cost per thousand and it reduces to 68? I will start with a cost of 574 dollars. It won't be 718, which will give me a, 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 a space of 144 dollars per hectare. Usually we have better prices. We wouldn't have to be doing all these adjustments, but the process that we are now force us to make these decisions. This is a real phase that was done, and where we can see it was we use a spray brood at one time. And I presented to you so the people that don't have pre brews and they don't have this, uh, those pre brooding areas, they, they can use one pound to use it as a pre brooding phase. And that will allow you to increase your yield and optimize the hectares. As you can see here, this pool is the 20, is right between 6, 19, and 21. That was used as a mother. The day of harvest was the 27th, uh, we put uh, the growth uh, of transfer was 1.40 grams, and the survival was around 73%. That allowed us to have at the time of transfer that larvae, with uh, taking into consideration of the cost, the cost was uh, $6.04, uh, that we hear is the cost here. As you can see, on the tank 19, was put the larvae to 100,000, 100,000 here, we put the pool, the larvae from the pool 20, and then I transfer from the 19 into the 20 because this was completely empty. I broke back the larvae from the 19 to the 20. And they were all the four pools seed with a cost of six dollars per thousand and a shrimp to begin with 1.40 grams. At the end, that lot, they made money even if they have prices so low because the cost of per pound, we were around 110 in average. How do we improve the survival on the pre in the several aspects that we have to take into consideration among them is the good condition of the larvae. One of the things that I check the larvae that I pay attention, that's a lot of detail, but what I pay more attention is that the muscle of the animal is transparent, it's not a stress. Sometimes they are flaccid animals, they start with a dark muscle, glassy, it's a stress. If I add the stress, the, the, the transportation, the picking up, the most likely is when I get into the farm I'm going to be losing a great amount. Another thing is that not has epicommensals. If they have epicommensals, that means that there's uh, something was not done properly by the lab, they did not exchange the water properly, the water was dirty, and we have that kind of inconvenience. It's better to leave it one or two days to clean it up, I mean able to transport it. The branchial development should be proper as, as their days, if we're going to check one PL12, I may find PL7, PL6, they are late animals, but the percentage should be very low, very low. And after I can put into the tank to uh, separate the larvae and minimize that amount of small animals. 
One thing that I recommend is reinforce the artemia at least one day before transportation. If we are going to put a larvae to a stress, to strong stress, we should prepare it. Give it one or two days before of possible three days the transportation. Our reinforcement of artemia morning, afternoon, late in the afternoon, that way we prepare the animal to be ready for the transportation as per the nutrition for view. We will see clearly at the time that you feed some tanks with that and those doses, the additional doses of artemia. And then the others, you don't do it, you will see that in three days, there's going to be a huge difference as per the quality and the growth and the larvae that was fed with artemia before transportation. The transport of the larvae, well, to say how many grams I'm going to put on the tank, the larvae is going to be so big at the time they start to low decrease the amount of water on the tank, 7, 8 p.m., for example, until it's counting, in, in my case, are 7, 8 uh, hours of transportation until it's reached there and then it goes to the uh, farm and that the, the person will get together and as we have to take those times, uh, that animal is going to be between 12, 10, 12 hours subject to a stress of high density. So let's try not to put a lot of grams on the tank for the transportation. The cost is going to increase on the transportation, but it's worth it. On the feeding, when you feed the animals on the transportation, you have to be very careful. You, do, you cannot give them a lot. Uh, you cannot give them a lot of food on the transportation, as little as possible, because the increment of the ammonia is high. I have had uh, sometimes tanks that they come for four or more of ammonia. So the water is stressful by itself, and uh, that may harm the quality of the animal. And measure the oxygen. I have had a different task with saturation, with 20. So uh, it's good to be taking the oxygen and checking certain X amount of time and corrected as if it needs to correct it. Sometimes uh, some stones don't diffuse, they are, seem to bring a lot of oxygen, but they are not fulfilling the function because they are damages. Uh, it should be a very thin bubble and makes more efficient the exchange of oxygen with the water. The seeding of the pools, always when the larvae arise before seeding, we have to measure the oxygen temperature and the ammonia because sometimes the oxygen goes lower. Sometimes I have uh, some pounds and what I found is low oxygen in the morning. Sometimes, as it happened that when it's fertilized because the water do not have a lot of nutrients or is uh, with uh, little algae and it to fertilize it, then it happens, it can increase the ammonia depending on the fertilizer that you use. That in low salinity you have to keep reviewing the salinity because there might be a mistake at the time that they sent from the lab. If you were not there and didn't check it, you have to be careful with that. And if possible, uh, leave a witness. To, it's always important to guarantee that the larvae that it was it is still alive for two or three days. It doesn't have a problem if you have it for two, three days in the wa on a, in a bag with water or the pool and algae and lives there two, three days, no problem. The preparation of the pre-brewing, the, the different pre brews is to put the different kind of mesh that you have to put in a half, half a moon to avoid that they escape on the sides by the size that is properly sealed, they have a good amount of algae, a percentage of high of the atomia is high. If it's necessary to apply silica to foment the, the atomia, apply it, apply probiotics. I put a mix of probiotics because uh, I like uh, do a ferment 
of probiotics with uh, with yeast, with bacillus, um, lactic bacterial, and here, and apply into the water and the soil of the pond. Well, normal parameters that the, the water should have uh, prepared for the culture. The feeding, the PL should be, the, we cannot give a very big grain for a small animal. It has to be according to what is the size of the size, because then we have disparity on the sizes during the harvest. is a, a big disparity. One thing that I recommend, and I put it here in red, is that the balanced food, that especially at the beginning, and if possible along the whole culture, be with a good amount of probiotic. That balance that is supply, the animal won't be eating it all. A lot, a good part of the balance is going to remain in the pool without being eaten. And that, if doesn't come with a probiotic that may help us, that balance is going to become an, an infection focus, like a culture of, for vibrio pseudomonas, a great media to, for their growth that this will damage or strain my head. I have been decreasing the mortality on a great amount using probiotic on the balance, on the water and the soil. That has helped me to have uh, larvae 30, 34, 36 days without any mortality issue. The parameters along the uh, seeding, you have to be very aware and keen, keep an eye on the oxygen. It's very important parameters. It has to be measured. And if I see that it's 2, 1.5, suddenly you won't see mortality. The, the animal is not going to float. There is not going to present their barbs, as has been said. But remember that the larva uh, change every day, the exoskeleton. If I have a low oxygen, the larvae that is changing is going to die. It's going to be changing the, the exoskeleton. They were not to be able to get out and it's going to die. So we cannot say oxygen lower than three. Always above three in the morning. If it's lower, we need to find a way to increment the exchange to put another layer, but the oxygen should always be above three, better above four. The ammonia has to be measured. We are adding balance of a good amount, protect amount, and this won't be eaten for the swim. A big part is going to remain in the pool, and this is going to make that we free ammonia under anaerobic uh, some, some sulfur, so we need that is properly oxygenated and this ammonia is controlled. We have to measure it, not let it increase, make a sample of water as deep as possible from the pond, because sometimes they is only taken in the surface, and the ammonia that is being free on the bottom they did not reach the surface, so take it as deep as you can. We will have a bad lecture if we don't do so. The alkalinity, the calcium, magnesium, potassium, and other components that need to be measured. Remember that the larvae does hit a exchange of PL every day. One thing that we did at the beginning here with the producer was to uh, put it in raceways. In Resbud, we had a day, in 18 days, PL, we have to have people ready, we hire personnel, specialist personnel with good pays. But, uh, likewise, let's may go out, the generator suddenly cannot start immediately, and we lose animal, we lose Resbud. So we decided to prove the pre brooding do a pre brooding there. We did a pre brooding and observed basically that the the difference in the same days was huge. So we decided to close the raceways and go directly with the pre brooding. That's uh, 
observamos también que important because we observe that as bigger the animal is seen into a pool, dying weekly increment is much better uh, compared with a larvae of half a gram in, with an increment of a week is going to be 1.4, 1.5, 1.6. If I see the larvae of one gram or two grams of size, the increment of that pool is going to be 1.8, one 1.7, 2.2, 2.1, as per the conditions. But um, which, which is the size that you start is very important because that also makes your time on the pond shorter and the bigger road. How are built? What is the the problem in areas. Well, this is a regular wall here. It was the wall that was constructed. It was taken from the one of the size one and a half hectare, and we did an entry, a tube, and the same over here on the exit. A small compartment and very important. This preparing must have an excellent drop, but if you leave it very plain or a small slope with five inches, five centimeters or ten centimeters, they will go down. It has, it has to be a, with a good slope to make this talud and you do a channel there to is picking up everything and go out to the door to guarantee that it has a good slope and that let it slide down. Those are treatments that can be given when the and a pre with soils uh, with a lot of organic material. They need to treat the soil, put bacteria, remove it. Uh, bacteria, all the organic material try to break it down. So in, from time to time we cannot eliminate, but we can break it down to avoid that that becomes an, an infection source and better it becomes uh, um, like food and not a culture for some uh, eventual bad animals. So this is one of the things that we put, in, one of the five pre-brews that we put there, and we were able to observe and observe the laboratory effect. On the five pre we have this problem. The small animals, it was decided because of that to change of provider in this case we started to have more um, more focus on the on the differentiation of the sizes this is what we use to separate the sizes the larvae go outside we put that net to separate all the small larvae goes through, goes through, goes through, and then uh, operator take that, those larvae that went through and eliminate and separate from the rest of the larvae that remains there. And here, there is a small video, so you can see. As you can see, it's pretty simple. It doesn't take a long time. The animal is not stressed. Only the ones that go through is, uh, take out of the tank, so you can have an idea the animal that remains there. It's 250, 270, and the animal that goes through is going 450. Uh, yeah. Well, this is a chart that uh, would derive feed the preprudings. I've been able to observe those are the day in the reference, the size, as per the days are going through the size that is being applied to the animal. And 
This is the percentage of biomass. The issue they do is uh, every three, four days, I wait it and I check how the animal is growing, and according to that, I am adjusting my feeding. Very important that we have into consideration the size of the pea that is going to be fed. I put the reference of the pellet. I did a test where at the beginning it can be 0.5. After three days, I wanted to change to 0.8, but now they do not eat it. I want to, I have to give it a few more days to 0.5. And when they gain size, I changed to 0 0.8, 0 0.9. I was able to eat it easy. Then you have a bigger animal and you can change it to a pellet. 1.2 you can do uh, mixed from Sundays to different sizes of pellet. Uh, and uh, in that way, in this case, do like a pellet of pellets so all the animal might be eating equally so everyone eats the references that I have here is by every hundred thousand of million of live animals I usually fed around 100% to the day 10 or 15 you can adjust this and you can see it on your experience and afterwards I decide if I put a million uh, and feed for 900,000 animals, uh, so what I have here, I multiply it for 9. That will be the chart that, uh, that I will handle, the chart I have proved in density of 500 up to 2 million PL per, per hectare. And those are the, what happens is that I have 500,000, the animal is going to grow bigger, and if I have 2 million, the animal is going to be growing slowly. But the percentage of biomass that are going to remain as per the size of the animal is the rank of feeding for each one of the apricots. And uh, I do not recommend to see the small animal. That's why I did not put here the days. I do not recommend it. Because this small animal, if it's very small, in an average, if we have 350, 400 uh, PL gram, uh, an animal of 500, and that animal may go through the different uh, different kind of meshes that we may have for a small leaf or something that may go through and we are going to be finished with less animals since the beginning of the city. So uh, as long as it's possible, put less than 250, 200 is an excellent size to start uh, uh, pre brooding 180, 100, much better. It all depends on how do you negotiate your larvae with the labs. They are prepared to keep an animal easily to 200 kilograms. In this scarcity, they, they want to put animals of 400, but this time with the conditions, the prices, we cannot risk or pre to reason to put a very small animal that we may lose on our cost per hectare per um, thousand of PL becomes very expensive. Well, I think that will be all for I have. Uh, tell about the moment any question remark through Conaqua. I will be happy to answer your different uh, requests or suggestions. Likewise, I will receive them happily. Thank you. Thank you. Be well.